do appreciate it. And for the people that haven't gotten it or on the fence of buying it, now it's time to buy it, guys. I'm going to hit, go ahead and do a, a half off promotion for the rest of the month. Give you 50% off the course. Um, for those who kind of on the fence or didn't have the money available to buy it, now hopefully it's going to be. What is up, Innovation Family? How's everybody doing today? Just want to wish everybody a happy Monday. Hope you guys had a productive day. A little bit later in the evening than I usually record, but it's all good. Better late than never. Um, remember, guys, as always, to like the video, uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the notify button, and look out for new videos on the horizon. A lot of good content, guys. It's been a crazy couple weeks. So I want you guys to stay updated on what I got going on. I want you guys also to go over to our new podcast. Well, I should say my man's podcast, Swerving Irvin, uh, Rondell Irvin on the at, on the White Gorilla uh, Corporation Network. So check him out. I'll link his um, his page uh, for his YouTube below also, so you guys can check out our uh, updates and what we got going on over there on that network around topics that you guys might be interested in. So. Today's topic though around Turo and the cars is gonna be on the 2017 Dodge Charger uh, RT Daytona. So you guys, I haven't done a video on the Charger for a while, but I had some bad news about two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, the car was not returned. So a renter had rented the vehicle, uh, wasn't anything too crazy or, or too suspicious. He was a five-star renter um, from his previous rental, so I didn't think too much about it. Just a one-day rental, guys. So I'm not really a big fan of one-day rentals, but at the same time, where we're at as far as the market and what's going on, you gotta be flexible. He ran the vehicle for one day. He hit me up the next morning. When he's supposed to drop it off that day. Hit me up in the morning. Let me know if the car was missing and was taken. I guess one of his roommates or a coworker had taken the vehicle um, and grabbed the key and, and dashed with it. So that's his story. Again, as previous videos, when cars aren't coming back or stolen, whatever you want to call it, do I get involved in all the the policing and FBI work and trying to figure out what's what and do all the, and find all the blues clues. No, I don't personally. So I just go ahead and do the process that I always follow when a car is coming back in late or not returned. Contact Turo first, that's most importantly, and then find out what they want you to do, which is probably gonna be one, they're gonna uh, create what's called a demand letter for you that you send out to the client. Um, and then what you wanna do after that is you wanna go ahead and get the police involved and get a police report and let them know what happened, especially if it took place in the jurisdiction um, in a town or a county that you're not familiar with, you gotta go ahead and get a police report in that county. So went ahead and got a police report, got all that filed, and come to find out the car was located in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, so I had to, you know, do my investigation and pull up the information via the trackers on the vehicle. Um, so that's why it's always important, guys, to have trackers on your vehicles because these are assets in the day. You wanna get your cars back um, so that you can, you know, continue to use Turo or you, you got to sell the car or whatever, that's fine too. But these are assets. Remember, this is a business. So car came back, I was able to get the uh, Turo uh, roadside involved as far as repoing the vehicle. And what was today? Monday? So it came back Saturday uh, via the, the Turo repo uh, unit. They, they went ahead and drove from Cincinnati to Atlanta, got the car back to me. Overall, the car wasn't in bad, any bad damage as far as the body, just a regular uh, wear and tear as far as the miles. So they probably about 2,000 miles or so over the limit. <clears throat> um, and then also too, you know, when you when you get me dealing with a certain crowd of people, you're gonna have all types of stuff in the car, whether that be their products, weapons, or whatnot. So in this case, there were drugs in the car that I had to get disposed of. And also they had stole the license plate or got rid of the old license plate that I had on there and put on some fake temporary tags. So that's pretty common when people don't return a vehicle or try to steal a vehicle. They'll put on some fake bogus temporary tag and you know all that good stuff. So usually, I mean, to me, I think stealing cars, taking cars is, is not what it used to be. I mean, with technology and everything else, I don't think it's worth people taking, you know, prison or penitentiary chances over um, a stolen vehicle because they most of the time they will come back or insurance company will pay out for it. But it's just a car, so I don't know what's going on. But I know a lot of people are into the Dodge Chargers or popular cars, especially the the, the, um, the model that I have and the body style that I have. So I'm, I'm this is not the first time this has happened. You just got to stay calm, cool under pressure, and everything else will work out. So I got the vehicle back. I was able to charge for smoking 
able to charge for um, the excess miles, able to charge for getting key new key fobs made, able to charge for the late return fee. So all, all in all, I made a pretty good penny um, on getting the vehicle back and, and trying to get it restored. Now it's got cleaned out, got detailed, and it's back on Turo. And hopefully we can get it back going this weekend, this weekend for some bookings. So again, guys, you know, never panic when these situations happen. Don't take it personal. Don't get emotional. Just kind of just let stuff play out and do your due diligence. As far as somebody doesn't return your vehicle, or you think it might be stolen, make sure you're proactive to begin with by having your trackers, uh, keeping an eye as far as your, your, your car, where it's located at, along with communicating with your guests or whoever has the vehicle. So that's important when it comes to the Turo business. Even if it's just a simple, hi, how you doing? Just checking in to see if you're doing okay today. Things like that can go a long way as far as keeping open communication with your guests so they know that you know, you're know you a good host and that you are you know making sure that the product is taken care of. Um, but it can't get weird. So let's just be honest about it. So this is one of those cases I want to be transparent with you guys and let you know what's going on. But the car is back and we're going to just keep moving and keep pushing, guys. So... Hope you guys enjoyed the video. You guys have a great night. Take it easy. Appreciate it. I'm a real one my day one. Try to speak up, can't say none. Try dig dirt, there ain't none. I make the money that save up. 10 to 80, my save on. Take the top on the base one. New car, race on. Fast lane, pace on. With the booyah, that's a flex. Not a human, I am from another planet. I'm a teleport, might vanish.